Welcome, everybody. It's Monday, January the 29th. Drury and Jim from Tucson, Arizona. Might be Tuesday, January 30th, where you are. How are you doing? I am higher than a kite. <laughs> I am just overwhelmed with joy at what a beautiful grandchild we have and how welcome we are by her parents to be there. So I'm getting used to being a grandma, but my hair is not dark the way it used to be. So it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy to be with you all. I missed you last week, but <clears throat> it was homecoming day and we were all a little bit tired. So I really appreciate your flexibility and letting us take the week off. <laughs> and I'm also feeling excited. Our daughter is arriving today. So right after the call, we'll, we'll be taken off from here to go to the airport and picking her up. So that's another whole layer of happiness for us. So let's see here. Let's do, uh, if you're here for the very first time, uh, thanks for coming. I'm always curious about how people find their way here, but I'm really glad that you are here. And uh, we intend to follow our kind of our normal pattern here and just give you a little overview. We'll start in just a minute with a self-connection exercise, a ch chance to practice nonviolent communication on the inside just with you and to uh, check in with yourself, see how you are. Then we'll go to small groups, a chance for you to check in with uh, maybe some old friends, maybe meet some new friends, mm -hmm. give you some more uh, clarity about what to do there when we get there. <clears throat> then we'll come back here to the large group again and hang out for a little while, uh, hear how things are going for you, and then uh, have a little lesson today about um, what comes after scarcity with some hints about how to transform scarcity into whatever comes after those kinds of thoughts and beliefs <clears throat> and experiences that we have. There's a practice built into that. And I imagine that after that, we will also go to um, small groups and talk about it, see what you can harvest and learn with each other. So unless there's a, an objection or a question, we'll go ahead and get started with a self-connection exercise. not seeing anything. So <clears throat> let's just start by um, just setting an intention. Why do you want to do this exercise? What's it about for you? Might even be similar to why are you here in this class? What's your intention for being here? And then to bring yourself into the present moment, I invite you just to notice your breathing. You don't have to try to change anything about it. Just notice that you are breathing. Just connect with what it feels like in your body to take a breath in. Take a breath and let it go out. Something we do hundreds of times a day without conscious effort. It's so sweet for me to just slow down and notice how my body wants to support me. I'm getting my need for oxygen back. and also to support me in letting go of carbon dioxide that builds up and I don't need. And I wanna invite you to think about a time when you felt fulfilled. It could be something as simple as what it feels like to just take a breath and to notice that in that moment that you take the breath, you fulfilled the need for air, for sustenance and survival in that moment. 
or maybe you can remember a time when you were thirsty and you took a long drink of water and satisfied your thirst. Or maybe you can remember a time when you had a satisfying meal and you noticed that your belly was full. Or maybe a time when you just slowed down and noticed that you had shelter, maybe from a storm or Maybe it was cold outside and you made it inside where it was warm or cool, something more perfect for your temperature. Or maybe it's a time when you had your need for connection fulfilled. You've been hanging out with a friend or a loved one. Your heart opened. And that sense of satisfied connection. Or maybe it's another need. You just get to pick whatever need that you want to remember a time when it was fulfilled. Just name the observation for yourself. I felt fulfilled when and then notice your body as you remember this right now. Uh, what do you notice in your body? What's the signal that your need is fulfilled? Is there some kind of a sensation that you notice? Maybe some emotions go with it. This feeling of fulfilled. Where do you notice it in your body? What happens if you deepen your intention to just enjoy that sense of fulfillment in your body? And just make a wish that everyone have this awareness of fulfillment associated with the need that you chose. What would the world be like if all 8 billion of us had this experience of fulfillment? without exception. And from this place of being grounded in the experience of fulfillment, 
Just find out if there's any requests coming up for you. Requests may be of yourself. Request for somebody else. Is there some step that you want to take that emerges from this awareness? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. If like me, your eyes have been closed, you can allow them to open if you want to. And just look around kind of ground yourself in your environment. So <clears throat> just a minute, we're gonna um, invite you to go to small groups. It's a choice. And okay. What we're going to do in the small group is a chance just to connect, to enjoy um, a, a chance to be with one another, to share how this exercise is for you or how the group is for you so far. Most of the groups have two, uh, three people in them. And if there's a couple of pairs, and if you're not in a group right at first, just, just wait and we'll, or if you end up in a group and nobody's there, just give it a minute or two. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for people to, to um, get their internet connection clear. Can I do something real quick here? Yeah. Okay, so um, we're gonna set this up for 12 minutes. So it'll actually be 12 minutes, then there'll be one minute at the end uh, to kind of finish things up. And there's a request here that I'm trying to fulfill now that I've looked at the message, but I don't think that person is still here. So okay. I don't think okay. she is. She is. Okay. Well, so could you fix it? I, I, I time. I don't see the request, so you can do it. Okay. So, when you get to the group, just introduce yourself. Say maybe a little bit about how you're feeling, what you're needing, where you're from, whatever it takes to have a sense of connection. And then uh, everybody have about uh, three or four minutes. Oh, and I, let's let's do that at the next group. Okay. Since these are all ready to go. Okay, so uh, we'll do that, Tanya, in the next one. Okay, here we go. Too late to go back. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. I, I was just saying how I was. Welcome back, everyone. Go ahead, Rob. You have to you have to unmute yourself again. Because the... Oh, I was at a gasoline pump and I got gasoline all over me. It, it was shooting out. And all of a sudden, I noticed I was wet. So anyways, I'm washing my clothes twice. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. How terrible. Well, welcome here. I'm glad you made it. Thank you. Stay away from sparks, right? Absolutely, okay. yes. Anybody else have anything they want to say before we move into our class? I'd love to hear a, a little bit of feedback from people. If uh, you've never been here before, you can uh, raise your hand. There's a should be a button on the bottom of your screen that says raise your hand. If you have the latest Zoom software, or there's a little button down there that says reactions that you can open up and there's a way to raise your hand there. But how are you doing? I'd love to hear some other voices here besides ours. So what's going on for you? I could share, this is Corey. Um, I really enjoyed our breakout and uh, the people in my room originally with the three of us were from three different continents, although they're they're um they're closer now <laughs> the so one was from brazil one was originally from brazil originally from 
um, China and then I'm in the U.S. And I love, that's one of the things I love about your group is the international mix. It just warms my heart. And it seems like all three of us are, would really appreciated the uh, meditation and helped us to become more calm and more present and savor the moment. I think that's what we shared in common and that we want that more in our lives to savor and slow down, not you know, we tend to kind of move on to the next thing and and the fast paced lives that we're in, um, at least the three of us and most people nowadays. And um, so I just wanted to share that, uh, how how much we want that, but it's, it's challenging because of all the bombardment of information and, you know, the the, the, the fast paced world we're in. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a challenge. And to actually set that intention to do more savoring seems to be uh, so important. And I'll tell you, there's nothing like in, in enhancing the ability to savor than holding a newborn. Uh, I, I, her name is Nora, and I call it NTV. I just sit there and I watch Nora. You know, it's just like she's sitting there. She's not doing. I have pictures of it. She's not doing. She's not doing anything. But it's just fascinating to just be with her and to listen to her little squeaks and to breathe and to watch her stretch. So it's helped me to like start stretching a little bit more. So I'm really modeling her. You know, I figure she she's she's coming in just as pure awareness. There's no concepts, no beliefs, no hangups no programming, just pure um, human being. And so I want to see how much I can learn from her uh, until she starts uh, getting programmed by the culture. And I have to say, I'm sitting there watching him as he does it, just looking at how much joy and how much love comes out of this man and how excited he is. And I too am. I don't look at him when I am holding the baby out. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so yes, let, a, amen for saving. That's an important part of what we'll be um, um, practicing more of today. Thanks, Anjali, Corey. <clears throat> Anybody else? You can unmute and speak. You don't have to put your hand up. Hello, Jim and Jory. It's Dale from Perth, hey. Western Australia. Hey. hey. Hi, I'm here because I'm missing my MBC group because I'm waiting for a maintenance man. So I might have to disappear, but I thought I'd catch you for as long as I can. I'm and I, yeah, and I was with Dawn, who was in IIT in Bali as well. Oh. So that was very precious. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And I can. Oh, sorry, Joey. Oh, I was just saying, nice, nice to hear your voice and know what's going on a little bit for you too. Yeah, and I can really feel after that meditation, I'm sitting in my heart, which is really profound and beautiful. So, mm. thank you. You're welcome. Lovely. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. yeah Jim, I, I, you were just saying pure everything for Nora, and I, I just thought of the word pure essence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's your essence. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Nora, Nora um, is is almost a universal name. It it, it occurs in many different uh, languages. <clears throat> she was uh, her name was inspired by um, a woman named Noor, who was the daughter of Pir Vilayat Khan, who started the Sufi Order of the West, and Noor Khan. Uh, in her uh, mid third, in her thirties, uh, she lived in England. This was during World War II, and she changed her name to Nora Baker because she actually became uh, um, an agent for the British government, uh, trying to um, um, defend Britain against the Nazis. And she was killed for her efforts, and uh, so she's Nora's namesake. Uh, who, who Nora was named after. Nora, and Nora means light. Yeah. And then her middle name is Miles. And uh, Miles is, um, <clears throat> her namesake for Miles is a man who uh, started uh, a school in Appalachia <clears throat> during the, maybe the 30s or the 40s or the 50s. 
and I can't remember his last name right now, but this is the school that taught nonviolence to people like uh, Martin Luther King and uh, many of the other early uh, advocates for civil rights reform in the United States, nonviolent civil rights reform. So Nora Miles has quite the lineage in terms of her name. Anybody else? All right, looks like we're ready to move forward. Going, if you're waiting to be the last person, now's your chance. There's a hand up right here. Go ahead. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, you nope. your hand up? Nope. Uh, nope? Yeah. Yeah, your hand uh, You know, I was thinking though, I wanna share and Great. I don't wanna share, you know? So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I struggled a bit during the meditation to stay connected to the feeling of the needs met. Like I had to keep calling it back. And um, I think there was some discomfort in me to like, I had an experience where um, I had COVID recently and someone offered to bring me food and they brought me food and it felt really wonderful. And I, I just celebrated the needs met, you know, for, for care and being known. And, um, and I, I think that there was a weird longing for more of that, you know, that I, I, I was drawn to that feeling in an uncomfortable way, like that it was, you know, it, it highlighted the unmetness of that need in, in most, most of my life. So I, I struggled to stay with the practice, but I'm grateful to know that it is a practice and it's something I can develop and I can strengthen in me. So I'm glad you mentioned it, Jeff, because uh, behind, uh, in, in my experience, behind every celebration or savoring of a need met, there's mourning. And for exactly the reason that that you mentioned, I mean, even if you think of, of uh, something as simple as food, as much as you might enjoy the food, I know I can't really totally enjoy the food because I know that someone's going hungry, right? Mm -hmm. I have the privilege to be able to go to a refrigerator and pull food out while other people don't. And so uh, even though I can enjoy that my need for uh, food is reliably and abundantly met in my life at this moment, it's not true for um, millions of people, sadly. Mm -hmm. So my food, no matter how sweet it is, has a taste of bitterness as well. And so mm -hmm. I think that it, the, the savoring is not so much uh, the feeling, uh, although that's important too, but to just savor the need, the need for sustenance, mm -hmm. the need mm -hmm. for it to be seen, the need for connection, the need mm -hmm. for support. And that, that can be something that can really help us to, to regulate our bodies and our nervous systems. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that up. Anything else you want to say in response to that? No. Yeah, I'm grateful to be practicing it. You know, I just wanted to repeat that, that it's not something I'm great at at this moment, but one day at a time, keep going. So, yeah. yep, you learned how to ride a bike, right? <laughs> Wheels <laughs> off, and now you can probably ride it. Thank you. Appreciate the space. You're welcome. Thank you. Tanya? I, I had an experience this weekend that um that um it was a situation uh very different and i'm not going to go into it because it's a long hairy story but there's a situation where i was mourning something and um and i was asked to you know impersonate a, a person who i was mourning for and what they said to me was uh don't do that be happy and i'm thinking that all the people that you're mourning for them not eating, they may want you to be happy that you are eating, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, um, because, uh, it, you know, if you have something to rejoice, rejoice, you know, because uh, otherwise the people who don't have that, it's almost a, a, a dishonor of them to, to not appreciate. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, Thank you. Thank you for that Thank clarity. Absolutely. Yeah, I like the way you <clears throat> Do you have time for one more? Please, oh, yeah. yes. Come on by. <laughs> okay, just an insight that I had is that um, when you were saying to lean into like the needs 
you know, deeper and deeper and um, go into it deeper, I noticed a contraction and that I um, found it challenging to go deeper into connecting with the needs and um, um, mind were calm and presence. And, um, and so that um, brought up some curiosity in me about me and, um, you know, that kind of teetering between, oh, want to want to stay somewhere known and, oh, want to experience more calm and presence. Um, and then the other thing was how powerful I found it to imagine uh, everyone in the world uh, experiencing these needs. Um, because as I went through in my mind, imagining all different kinds of people in all different kinds of situations, experiencing calm and presence right where they are, um, the world changed for me. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And then I started crying. I was like, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful world. And that actually helped me connect with it more than trying to just do it by myself, in, within myself was um, that connecting with it through imagining so many other people connecting with calm and presence. Um, and then it, I realised that it was that I also wanted safety to, to be calm and present. Yeah, that's me. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Going once. Speak now or forever hold your peace until next time. Well, there'll be other chances to speak. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Next time here. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well, let's. With... Yeah, go ahead. I was just, um, when you talked about savoring before, Jim, it really helped me locate um, what happened in my experience. I, um, I have spinal injuries and I've been at home for most of three years and on the weekend I was finally able to go to a community gathering and ran into several different bunches of my friendship circles which brought me so much joy and so I was really sitting with this feeling of friendship and just you know over friendship that lasts over years and years even if you don't see people for a while and um, so I was savoring that this, um, today as we were doing this exercise and kind of letting my heart um, melt into that feeling of warmth and just um, the surety of friendship and the trustworthiness of friendship and then as I was going deeper into that I noticed I, I, my mind popped to someone else who wasn't there but was a friend of someone there who has really hurt me in the past and that shadow kind of came across my experience and then I noticed this feeling of kind of doubt and um, uncertainty like can I really trust these friends what if actually all of these people maybe aren't as good friends as I was just imagining and so I just sort of stayed in my heart noticing my feeling of warmth and purity of heart and that kind of innocence of joy of feeling love for my friends and then watching this kind of um this hesitancy or doubt and then kind of acknowledging that actually all human beings might break trust at times or all human beings have this capacity to make a mistake or and so I was just sort of reconciling that in my heart and I think when you said the word savoring just a minute ago it really helped me because what I came out with is actually I can trust myself and actually I can trust my integrity of loving my friends really purely and I can trust um, the the joy and the purity of my heart and I'm pretty sure that that's reciprocal with all those people because they were showing me a lot of love and warmth and delight but um but can I make space with to hold trust with this new reconciling that actually we're all infallible and so for me that savoring kind of um opened a new potentiality for me to feel some acceptance like to not demand an absolute perfection of this need to be met in a very particular way but to really allow that trust can move in the world in different ways and really it's it's my heart holding the trust and it's my heart that can be a loving friend and to just really savor that and stay true to that and let that be the purity rather than the circumstantial coming and going of people or Absolutely. friendships or 
you know Thank so you. i really appreciate that word favoring yes yeah. i'm and really the- inspired yeah. by that sense yes. of self-responsibility yeah. and what you just mm. what you just said that's really inspiring mm. for me Thank you, Elspeth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And anyone else? Or... All right. Okay. So we are working on <clears throat> transforming scarcity this month. And so it doesn't matter whether you've been here for the other two classes, because um, each class stands alone, although it builds on the previous class. But uh, one of the things we talked about the first couple of classes was the components of uh, something called the scarcity loop. Now, this is not an NVC concept. This is a concept that I learned um, from a book called uh, The Scarcity Loop or Scarcity. And um, I just so saw it as at the heart of some of the, some of the issues I see in, uh, in the NVC community, because as much as we talk about uh, abundance uh, in NVC, I sometimes see myself and uh, others acting as if uh, we're coming from scarcity. And when I read this book, it like opened my eyes to some new possibilities of ways to practice NBC. So I wonder if anybody remembers uh, any of these three components of the scarcity loop, and if anybody wants to just name them. It has been a couple of weeks. Oh, uh, intermittent reward. <laughs> yes, oh, inter- yeah. intermittent reward. Yep. What was the other one? I was going to say something about repeatability. Yep. Like if you don't like this one, you can get the next one. Exactly. And um, and multiple opportunity. That was the other one. Or- exactly. <clears throat> so opportunity, unpredictable rewards, and quick repeatability. <laughs> and so <clears throat> the other main point from the previous classes is that scarcity has been the observation for, uh, and it continues to be the observation for some of us, but for many of us, especially in the so-called developed world, we have moved beyond scarcity into something else where we don't have scarcity anymore. In fact, we we have too much. We have too much uh, uh, opportunity and repeatability for things like uh, Fritos corn chips or- (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or Wendy's uh, burgers or whatever they are. <clears throat> and so it leads to some problems. And so today we're gonna work a little bit about um, how, to, how to undo it a little bit more. Um, so think about for a moment and just put it, your answer into the chat uh, or into your journal for a second. And just think about what's the opposite of scarcity. So if scarcity, if there was a spectrum, <clears throat> with scarcity at one end of the spectrum, what's at the other end of scarcity? Just think about it for a minute. Abundance, feeling of contentment, excess. Yes, there you go, excess. I think I think that that's the one that really really lands on the other end of scarcity is excess. So that's not what we're aiming for. We're not aiming for too much. We're aiming for something else. So, uh, what's in the middle? You know, Buddha. The Buddha talked all all the time about the middle path. So if scarcity and poverty are at one end of the, of the thing, uh, of the spectrum, and uh, excess is at the other end, what's in the middle? Enough. Yes. Yeah. I think that's the word that describes it. Mm-hmm. Sufficiency, enough, yeah. satisfaction, yeah. contentment. So <clears throat> that's what, what, what we're, aim- that's yeah, what we're aiming you. for. So let's practice a little bit. Going back to the initial um, uh, exercise, and if you weren't here, we'll just go through it again uh, real quickly. Think of a moment when you had a sense of a particular need 
that has been satisfied. And write down the observation. What's an observation of a time when your need has been satisfied? Could be something as simple as the breath that you just took. Doesn't have to be exotic or complex. If you're like me, <clears throat> you might think of many examples. That's great. <clears throat> And just pick one for the practice, knowing that you can work with the others later if you like. And just write down an observation. Why is this important in NBC? This gives the mind and the heart something to focus on. It becomes the doorway to connection, either self-connection or connection with others, to be able to say what we see hear, smell, taste, or touch, or think. What's the observation? And then from that, go to your body and notice sensations, sensations that arise in the moments when you have this sense of satisfaction. Satisfaction is a feeling. And so we're gonna <clears throat> kind of unpack, explore the sensations that are part of satisfaction what do you notice in your body? You might notice something about sensations, especially in the core of your body, your your chest, your belly, your throat. Maybe there's something about your breathing. Maybe you notice other sensations. Just notice that and then, and since a need has been satisfied, it's likely that you're feeling pleasure <clears throat> Pleasure is this natural reaction that we have when our needs are fulfilled. So sometimes we describe these sensations with an emotional concept, like satisfied, content. What emotions come up for you in this moment of fulfillment? Maybe gratitude, appreciation, awe, inspiration, interest, love even, excitement. Maybe even some sweet pain, the sweet pain that this, this won't last or other people don't have it. That can be all part of what we're savoring here. What's the quality of your thinking, if any, in these moments? of satisfaction. 
What do you notice about what's going on in your mind? And then return to the need again. And just, if the need has a name for you, just say the name to yourself. <clears throat> and then extend that sense of savoring of the pleasure of the feeling to the energy of the need. Just allow yourself to enjoy that this is a flow of energy that you're in the middle of when you're enjoying the pleasure of satisfaction or contentment or appreciation. And see if you can expand your heart and make it big enough to realize that even as you're enjoying that this need has been satisfied in the way that you're remembering, that sometimes it's not. <clears throat> that that's just the way life is. That even though you enjoy the sweetness of this next breath, that soon you'll need another one. even though you enjoy the fulfillment of a meal, soon you'll be hungry. Can you grow a heart big enough <clears throat> to hold the pain of an unmet need and the pleasure of a met need? Can you hold the pain to know that your need is met even though someone else you love may not have that need met in this moment? That's empathy. Just an understanding of another person's experience. You respect their experience. And from that place of gratitude and empathy, can you open your heart to compassion? Compassion being the willingness to do something about it the willingness to notice that there are unsatisfied needs and you have power. You have the power to do something about it. From your compassion, actions, requests can spring. So what could you do to support a world where there's more reliable and abundant access to strategies to meet the need that you're sa savoring. What can you do about it? If it starts to feel overwhelming, you just notice that. 
name it, allow it. Then remember, it doesn't have to be the ultimate solution. It can be a baby step, a smile, a kind word, an acknowledgement of another person's experience, a donation to a cause that you care about, loving touch, an invitation to tea, it can be a million things. What tiny step might emerge from your compassion? I'm going to go back to small groups so you can talk about your experience now, whatever it is. Some of you might have really enjoyed this. You did. Sure, there's nobody on the side. Okay. No. Excuse me. We'll have uh, 20 minutes this time and check the groups real quick. So <clears throat> what I suggest you do in the small groups is, is just do a quick check-in first. Most of the groups are the same. There might be some some adjustments that have been made because people sure. have come and gone. Yeah. But just share uh, just one quick word or two of how you are in the moment as we do the transition. And then do another round and share what you learned. What's your harvest from this experience? What did you, what did you get from it? What did you like about it? What did you resist? And then be present for one another with empathy. It doesn't mean that, that you have to say anything. Empathy is never about the words, it's about your presence. So just being present with one another and do your best to avoid those non-empathic things like advice or trying to cheer somebody up and so forth. Just be present. We'll have 20 minutes to hang out and then we'll come back and talk about it some more. And if there's time, there's one more quick exercise. Here we go. Aloha. <laughs> For some of you, you're very relieved that that group is finally over. For others of you, you're like, hey, I wasn't finished yet. And some of you are right in between. So kind of a chance to practice in that moment. We'd love to hear some feedback about what you're taking away from the practice and especially anything that you're harvesting from, uh, from the small group. So please speak up. Let's hear what's on your mind. And I see a hand up already from Tanya. Please, Tanya, go ahead. Actually, I'm going to hijack and I'm going to um, say words of praise for for Eric. I heard many, many lovely things about Eric's presentation over the weekend. And I just want you to hear back, Eric, that people were really pleased with your work hmm. and just got so much out of it. Oh, thanks so much, Tanya. And I hope you all decide to come to the IIT in May in California. That's my... <laughs> That's my shameless plug. You want to hang out with me for nine days because Jim and Joy aren't available. Come to California in May. Oh, that's why you showed up today. Yes. That's why now. Went to promote yeah. all these promoters. No, that's no, crazy. no. It was it was mostly Jim and Joy yeah. and Tanya <laughs> and Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. I'll be there. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Great. Yeah. Um, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I I took the notion of growing a heart that's big enough to hold the met and the unmet needs as a sense of capa capacity, like that I can have a growing capacity for holding these things. And I know that my tendency is to like, okay, that needs met, let me focus on where the unmet needs are. And I quickly go right to there. So learning how to sit with those, the sense of enough, 
that's a that's a growth thing for me. But then I think you said something about like, what's one step you can take towards developing that capacity? And the only thing that came to mind for me was like, when I'm in that moment of, oh, I have enough, I can like let some part of my body relax, my shoulder, my neck, my jaw, my whatever. I'm yeah. really interested to hear what other people, what action steps people can take to grow that sense of capacity for enough. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got any ideas? What What else did you come up? Go ahead, Cecilia. Yeah, I'm happy to share because that resonates with me so much. Um is we, I mean, we're part of a culture that runs on people lacking so people can look for more and like buy more, travel more, learn more. It's, you know, it's so much pressure. Yeah, so much pressure. And in my group, we had a really interesting discussion and what I'm taking with me is like, the of course, the first step step is consciousness like I have enough I really don't need all of these things I'm I'm just fulfilled where I'm at um, but then also it also comes with the hard work of saying no <laughs> like I don't want to buy more you know like sometimes for me it can feel a little exhausting and of course I turn off from these things, you know, like not, I don't need to know everything that is on the news or take all the courses. I can, I can go with my life and, and to Jeff's point, you know, like give myself the space to savor the enoughness and, and rest and enjoy and contentment. Uh, but it, it's, it's a practice. It seems like swimming against the current. <laughs> Yes, it's definitely swimming against the current because yeah. we're getting constantly bombarded with messages that that either we're lacking something or we're lacking ourselves. Uh, we just need to, you know, get some new skin cream or one thing or another, new new clothing, whatever it is. And so um, we're definitely swimming upstream. And I think your strategy of slowing down and savoring and just just actually naming the observation, I have enough. I have enough, you know, it's like Amazon, Amazon, you know, we live in Hawaii. We kind of rely on Amazon because we can get things on Amazon. We can't get everywhere else, but Amazon knows what I want before I do, or at least it thinks it does. Yeah. So, so I open it up to get some staple thing that we get all the time, but it's like somehow it's monitoring my emails or whatever it says, are you, don't, don't you want that new iPhone yeah. thingamahaber or whatever it is. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, there's this temptation to just say, and so I love your idea of just learning to say, no, no, I don't need that. That's not a need. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Support each other in it too. Yeah. And uh, Ellen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd like to respond to Jeff's. Uh, request for sharing about what uh, what practice that is uh, possible to do uh, to uh, to nurture more the enoughness and uh, I remember when I first attended uh, Jory and Jim's session about scarcity some months ago the first the first one and then uh, I shared about my scarcity bias around money. And um, after that, I I read the book that you recommended about the scarcity brain. And I also read some other books about around money. And uh, there is one book that's really transforming me. It's the, the book titled, It's Not Your Money. Mm -hmm. So it helps me to realize that actually uh, I'm just a steward of this money. So it really helps me to let go of all the anxiety. Not always, but <laughs> many times I can, I can feel that now whenever I take out money to pay something that I I can sense uh, this uh, joy that uh, 
I am trusted by the universe to mm. handle this money and I can take it out to pay something and it's a privilege to be able to pay something. Uh, yeah, realizing that everything that I, I, <laughs> the sense of I have, it's actually not not mine and some but some someday it will all go away and and we flow with it and believe just believe that everything that we need will be met on its time love yeah. it it's inspiring to hear you say that yeah thank you yeah yeah not to have that graspiness and to be able to have that trust yes. that even if it's not here right now we can have it and I, I love this idea of uh, what came up for me as you were talking, Ellen, was of uh, giving something away. That's that a gift. The way we used to say it in the community where Jory and I met is to give a gift that you can afford to give. Exactly. And so um, to find and, and being grandpa, granddad awakens in me all kinds of gifts that I didn't know I could afford to give before. And it was the same when I was a, a young parent. You know, suddenly you you find access to resources that you didn't have. So you're giving, 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 and uh, and yet it's so important also to make sure to balance with your own needs. Like even during this call, when while you guys went into your small groups, I could feel my voice was tired. I was starting to do a lot of coughing, so I just went and sat on the couch for 15 minutes just to rest my voice. And so finding ways to not only give out but to give in as well as another way of balancing um, that scarcity loop. Anybody else want to share anything? Hi, it's Corey. I just want to share um, the word that came to me that I like that um, is similar to enough and it's fullness. Hmm. And I really like that. It came to me and I thought, you know, like when we're eating and we know, there's a sensation when there's enough, right? Yeah. And we say, I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. <laughs> At least in our I love mind. It. And <laughs> somehow, yeah. it, somehow it feels more uh, generous of a word than enough. Enough is just like, okay. But fullness is like, yeah, it's more expansive. Mm -hmm. And I and I like the just um, sort of meditating on fullness. It's just like it, it, energetically, not so much like, like a meal would could be done there too, but more like, um, you know, fullness of, of, for today, I had enough, or I had this fullness of connection. It just feels more, if I say that, I was yeah. ah, savoring the fullness of connection for today. So I wanted it. to share that. I love that word. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to spend, spend uh, to use our energy to, uh, to savor those body sensations that are information for us, that really give us clues about not only that we're stuck in a loop of scarcity, but that we're out of it. We're actually enjoying this experience of enoughness. Anybody else want to share anything? <clears throat> Let me give you a couple of other little hints to go with what Jeff said. So you remember these <clears throat> three components of the scarcity loop, opportunity, unpredictable rewards, and quick repeatability. <clears throat> so those three components also contain clues for requests. So let's just say, let's just use um, potato chips as the example. <clears throat> so uh, let's just say that, uh, you know, we're buying into the advertising slogan, you can't just eat one Lay's potato chip. And so uh, what we do instead is um, we eat them and eat them and eat them because there's this opportunity that's there. So one way of dealing with the scarcity loop is to remove the opportunity. I noticed that I, I don't eat ice cream anymore uh, <clears throat> the way that I used to. It used to be almost a daily habit. And um, <clears throat> all I did was stop buying ice cream. So the opportunity is no longer in the house and living where we live in Haiku, <clears throat> it's like at least 20 minutes to go to the grocery store. And so um, that's one way of dealing with that kind of looping behavior is just eliminate the opportunity. Don't, don't buy things that are likely to feed the loop. 
<clears throat> in terms of unpredictable rewards, um, you can undo that just by noticing the rewards that you already have. So that's what the whole savoring exercise is already about. If we're already enjoying some savoring of the needs that are satisfied, then we're actually, it's much easier to predict what will happen uh, next time we do this, the be a behavior that we enjoy doing. So um, when, like, let's just say it's some sort of active compassionate service, it doesn't have to be unpredictable. Uh, we know, we, we learned that doing certain behaviors are extremely predictable what the outcomes are likely to be. So we just do more of those. And then the other thing uh, is quick repeatability. <clears throat> so that's slowing things down. What can we do in order to slow down the experience? <clears throat> so my, I think I talked the first couple of times about my, um, I, I'm a, I'm a infovore. You know, I, I kind of eat the news and I would get, I'd get into my scarcity loop by scrolling. And so what I've learned since we started teaching this class is um, pick something and just read it rather than scroll it. So it says, you know, like if I'm reading the New York Times, it tells me how long it's going to take to read it. It says seven minutes or whatever their prediction is. So I just spend the seven minutes. That's seven minutes that I'm no longer scrolling and something gets filled in me by actually uh, taking in the information, savoring it, thinking about it. Maybe I'm talking to jury about it or taking a note or thinking about how it might be added to a class or something like that. So it's a way of, um, of cutting the link to quick repeatability in order to just savor it in the moment. And then really connect to what the value of it is and what you want to do with it. Yeah, exactly. So those are some other clues. Rob, you had your hand up? I don't think so. You did a second ago. OK. Rob, is there something up for no, you? No, Santu does. OK, so. I'll check in with Rob in just a second. Go ahead, Santu. Santu. Mm -hmm. You still, yeah, 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 I was just asking if opportunity, can you explain the opportunity bit a little bit more? Like how can we reduce the opportunity? How can we reduce the opportunity? Okay, so yeah, think about what, let, let's say that I decided that I wanted to um, escape my, uh, or, or, or modify my behavior around uh, reading, um, reading the news on my iPad. Well, <clears throat> I just might uh, put my iPad in a place that's more difficult to get. So then I'm, I'm reducing the likelihood, I have to actually do some work in order to uh, go get the thing to do the behavior that I don't want to do. And you could also turn it around, like my friend Roger Sorrow, a certified trainer, <clears throat> he, wanted to he, he wanted to spend more time playing music. He found that very satisfying. And, and he noticed that um, his guitar uh, that he liked to play was always in the other room. And so he's just simply moved the guitar to the room where he was, so he saw it more often. And so it, it can work in either way. You either make something uh, that you don't want to do more difficult, excuse me, more difficult to do, or if it's something that you do want to do, you just make it easier to do. Does that make sense, Santu? Yeah, yeah, thank you, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, please explain the uh, un unpredictable rewards and quick repeat repeatability uh, once more for me with a little example, if you can. <clears throat> for how to uh, use it, uh, for, for what it means in terms of the scarcity loop or how to escape the scarcity yes. loop? Yes, 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 scarcity. Okay, so <clears throat> let me put it back on the screen and I'll just go through it really quick. Please. Yes. yes. So think about a, um, uh, a slot machine, a, a, a casino. Um, and so that's that's the best uh, metaphor for um, the scarcity loop. <clears throat> uh, so and if you go to Las Vegas, uh, of course, there's casinos everywhere. Not only are there casinos everywhere, but even um, slot machines are in places like uh, convenience stores, uh, restaurants, even at the airport, there are slot machines. So there's abundant opportunity. Now, when you're playing a slot machine, you, you say you put a quarter in and then you it goes through some kind of a thing. And every once in a while, 
you win, but you don't know when you're going to win. So you know you're likely to win eventually, but it's not predictable when. So that keeps you putting the quarters in. Uh, or if you're reading the news, you know that every once in a while you're going to read some kind of a story that really lights you up, that, that you really learn something. But you're not sure when, so it's unpredictable when you'll get that uh, dopamine hit. And then repeatability <clears throat> just means that it's something that's easy to do over and over and over again. Uh, like a slot machine, I, I remember, I, I never was a slot machine person, but my mom, my mom loved to play the nickel slot machines. <laughs> Uh, she would go to a casino every once in a while and uh, and wager a nickel at a time. <laughs> and but she would sit there and she could do it for for a long, long time, you know, for an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever, because it was so easy to to do. It's so and so quick to do the a slot machine game lasts, what, six, seven seconds or something like that. And then you either win or you lose, and then you put another quarter in or a nickel or whatever. She entertained it is. yourself. Yeah, so it was meeting some needs for fun and entertainment, and but it was it was you know it's it's exactly what gets us into the scarcity loop is these three these three pieces: opportunity, unpredictable rewards, and quick repeatability. So if you think about your own scarcity loop, you might figure out a clue for how to escape by looking at these three things. What can you change? Where's your personal power? Can you uh, can you get can you change the opportunity to do it by avoiding by not buying potato chips anymore? Can you change the predictability of the rewards by finding something that's more predictable? Uh, and can you um, change the repeatability by rather than making it quick, make it slow? You savor a little bit. Do more savor. Exactly. Does that help, Juliana? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, we got time for one more quick practice, I think. So <laughs> awesome. I want to do it because I just learned this. I, 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 so just think about, let's, let's work a little bit with transforming resistance. So think about a time when you get stuck in some kind of a scarcity loop, whether it's potato chips or gambling or um, some other behavior that you don't like. Like it could be something as simple as you notice if you're watching me today, I I stroke my beard a lot <laughs> while I'm teaching. Yeah, while well, you're thinking too, yes. you do that a lot. <laughs> All right. So first, so first you just notice something that you do. Okay. So you notice the pattern. So maybe you're doing something right now. I'm also a, a leg bouncer sometimes, and like to rub the the couch that I'm sitting on or pick something that you do that's repetitive and just name it and then do it go ahead and do it right now if it's possible like I'm going to just keep stroking my beard yeah I, I do it with my hands just like this mm -hmm. yeah so just do it, allow yourself to do it. And then talk to yourself. I'm gonna talk out, I'm gonna do it out loud, but I recommend you talk to yourself as you do it. But describe it, describe what's going on for you in rich sensory detail. So I can feel the kind of the softness of my beard, but there's also this kind of uh, roughness to it. And so it, it it's kind of, um, I can feel it on my fingertips as I move my hands over it. But I also feel it from the inside. I can feel where the nerves meet the hair and there's just like the sensation in my skin. And there's a sense of, of warmth in my hand because my hands are are moving. I feel a little bit of tension between in my finger and my thumb as I keep stroking. I notice that my ring finger is also involved in kind of this little ballet dance between these three fingers and these hundreds and hundreds of hairs on my face. <laughs> 
And I noticed that as I talk about it, I, my, my jaw relaxes a little bit. I just took a deep breath. I notice a feeling of a kind of a delicious vulnerability sharing it with you. And I, I notice a feeling of hope that it inspires something in you to accept yourself. And then imagine that whatever pleasure you're generating by this behavior just starts to spread. So it, the pleasure that's in my fingertips, I just let it spread through my whole fingers and into my hands into my wrists and arm, all the way up to my elbow. I see that I want to just kind of stretch my neck a little bit. Just kind of notice a whole feeling of openness and relaxation in my body. And I just let myself be with this simple pleasure, make something conscious that's usually unconscious. So I'll be quiet now for a minute or two while you play with it. I'm going to put up on the screen these steps that I just guided you into. Here's the steps in case you want to write them down. I'll just say it again for people who might just be listening and not see it on the screen. The exercise is called transforming resistance. You notice the pattern. You allow it. You describe it in rich sensory detail, savoring feelings and needs, and then just allow the pleasure to spread and permeate your experience. David, you have a question? You have your hand up, David, on mute. Okay. Accidental hand, I guess. Okay. Great. I'm good. Thanks. Was... Well, I'm going to take this off the screen unless somebody says you're not done with it yet. One more second, please. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> while it's no up, problem. while it's up there, I'm going to give some credit. I um, I'm doing um, some personal work. Uh, with a man here named Kevin, in, Kevin LaRue, I think his last name is here in Tucson. And he does, his, his training is in um, organic intelligence. And um, I'm going to do a series of sessions with him. And this, this reminded me so much of, of our self-empathy process. And yet it's just different enough that I just started playing with it, with, uh, with these behaviors. Like, um, like, like, like right stroking now. my beard. <laughs> and I'm not making myself wrong anymore for doing these things. You know, I'm just enjoying it. I'm, it, you know, there's this, um, this idea that every behavior that we have is in the service of the need. So what's this about for you? Whatever the, this is, what are the needs, uh, about for you, Ellen? Yeah, Jim, I'm interested in the, 
in the message here about turning the unconscious into conscious and I'm wondering about how to implement uh, this approach in our daily life. Uh, how, how how do we do it yeah. in uh, daily life? I trust that after this class, you'll start noticing more and more. Um, the, what, what I would become, what, what I would recommend is become a hound dog. Now, this is a, a U.S. Southern expression. I'll explain it. <laughs> Become a hound dog for pleasure. Okay, pleasure is the natural experience that we have when a need has been fulfilled. And being a hound dog, a hound dog is a kind of a, a dog that's popular, especially in the Southern part of the United States. And hound dogs have really big noses and they're great for sniffing things out. So they're hunting dogs. And so I want us all to become hunting dogs for your own pleasure, because the pleasure of a met need is the fuel source for social change. The pleasure of your met needs is the fuel source for social change. Every time you connect with gratitude, it gives you fuel that enables you to continue the important work driven by your compassion. So just notice the things that bring you pleasure and enjoy them. You may not you may not do them forever, but you're doing it now. So just enjoy it. So become a hound dog for pleasure. And Rob? Yeah, hi there. Um, I uh, am having a challenge with this exercise because I'm experiencing a uh, low level achy pain in my legs so I'm on a treadmill and I'm often experiencing this so I'm trying to tour with the idea somehow of uh, accepting or uh, being inquisitive about pain or something that is just a sensation and uh I don't know, maybe you can help me with that because it seems like the opposite. It was distracting me. It's not, it's the opposite of pleasure. It's pain in a way. So, yeah. So um, here's what, here's how I would work with it, Rob, is you say you feel the pain and then you get on the treadmill, right? Yeah. So the reason you're getting on the treadmill is because it helps you to reduce the pain, Right. You know, it's actually continuing though. It's like, I'm not able to beat it right now. I can go lay down. I might be able to beat it, but then I'd be less attentive. So I'm choosing to be attentive and somehow I just want to let the pain arise and just say, it's just a sensation and allow it. And, you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, that, that's something that, different. That's great something advice. different. That's yeah. great advice. That that's um, going at it from the other direction, just to notice it, name it for what it is—a sensation. Allow. Yeah, yeah, connect, yeah. And connect to the message. Now, pain, pain's a different kind of a whole different class. But what what I've learned about pain recently, um, this was on a TED talk, um, and maybe we'll talk about this next week. We'll we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> but um, this woman has discovered some things about pain. And the power of just naming the pain, like mm. you've done, is is certainly yeah. a, a step. And then to to just let yourself know that um, pain is a signal that something that, that there's a threat, right? We mm. feel pain okay. because of threat, Wake and up. so then you notice: Am I really feeling threatened right now? Is there something that that mm. That uh, is is actually trying to eat me. Is there a saber tooth tiger in the room of whatever mm -hmm. sort? If there is, then you address the saber tooth tiger. If there isn't, and you say, "Oh, look, look, maybe maybe this maybe there's no need for this pain right now. I got I got the message. Thank mm -hmm. you." And so oh, okay, let's try that, and we'll finish up with. But, the, then if, but, but then if the pain continues, just to say, you know that uh, maybe there's. Maybe it's not such a bad feeling. This is aliveness, you know. Maybe it's that bittersweet thing you feel with yeah. a lot of times in life. So you know, maybe it's better to feel it and just yeah, 
resisting it doesn't seem to help. So no, I think it might help more. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. it's saying resistance is futile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And Pooja, did you have something? Yes. So uh, I put my question in the chat. In popular culture, you know, like kind of like hounding for pleasure is considered to be indulgence. Is that just a social judgment? Like, yeah. Would you comment on indulgence versus pleasure? Yeah. So the way the way that I hold it is that pleasure is the natural feeling that arises when a need is met. But I don't want to confuse pleasure with happiness. Happiness is what happens when uh, it is more of a state of being when I'm acting in alignment with my values. So I just want to stay clear on the difference between pleasure and happiness. And I'm going to enjoy the pleasure when it arises but my aim is for the happiness that comes from contribution and from other ways of uh, getting the needs met. Then my follow-up question is then why should we be hounding for pleasure? <clears throat> to get rid, to uh, kind of help us work with the habit of resistance. <clears throat> so pleasure, ple pleasure is this natural, um, uh, experience that we have when a need is satisfied. And as, as, as I've continued to work with, with this, I've noticed that I, I begin to see a difference between uh, natural pleasure, which comes from a need being met, and the kind of um, um, artificial pleasure that comes from, uh, like the word you used, indulgence. And just learning to make these distinctions and, and move towards the uh, uh, working with natural uh, needs. Thank and you. I, That's really helpful. You're welcome. Tanya? Um, I was reading an article in The Guardian today. Um, it was political, but what was interesting to me was talking about the difference between uh, people who, um, who uh, value intrinsic intrinsic uh, pleasure and people who value extrinsic extrinsic rewards mm. and um, saying that people who have look for uh, intrinsic are have a tendency to uh, empathy and compassion etc and the people extrinsic rewards you know get into the reward and punishment loop pretty heavily Mm -hmm. And it, it just it just spoke to me so um, so deeply. And when I heard the last thing that you were saying, or was it you you were saying about the difference between the enjoyment of a need being met and the artificial um, uh, artificial kind of uh, pleasure cycle, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's 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 kind of what sparked that thought was is. Is this yeah intrinsic or extrinsic, well, or or transactional or relational? Is another you know way to look yeah, at it. You, you, th those are beautiful distinctions, mm -hmm. in and pointing in the direction that I'm aiming for in my own understanding. So I see it's a little bit past the top of the hour, and we need to, we're going to the airport to pick up Jaya. <laughs> so um, uh, we're gonna have class as normal next week, as far as I know. Uh, and uh, so there, there is going to be a shift to, to the platform that we use. We're going to be moving this class to NBC Academy, but it won't be until for two more weeks. So I'll give you the details next week about how to make sure that you can stay connected. Um, time will stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is uh, how you get connected, the login, the, the login stuff. And, yeah. and, and they'll give us ac ac uh, access to a classroom and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, and we send out that um, invitation every week. It'll just have a new login on it. So yeah. it'll be quite simple. All right. So we'll see. We're going to open up, um, um, what do we call it? Um, after party. After par party rooms here. If you want to stick around, feel free. And we will see you guys next week. Aloha. Right. Aloha. Aloha. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.